Okay, so we were coloring our type. We've added different effects. We're just trying it out on a gray, a black, and a white background. Remember, these effects can be turned on and off as long as you're patient and let PhotoP do it for you. So double clicking. So this is what I liked. It's pretty simple. It's a double stroke, so one black stroke that's on the text layer, and then one white stroke that's on a folder containing the type layer. So that helps it show up on the dark backgrounds as well, because it can show up on black and white and gray, then I can use any background and everything will show up, just like my spot illustration. Come on, turn back on. I need to stop trying to tell you, show you by disabling these because it takes photo a while. I've saved my work. I'm going to turn off that black background layer, maybe even delete it to save some memory. And now it's time to choose a background color. And we can do texture as well, and then a border. So this is 16 by 20 by 350. If I look at some of these posters, some of them have flat color backgrounds. A lot of them have really subtle gradients. I love that. That works well in printing, but notice the colors are never very saturated. Sometimes they have patterns, like this linear pattern here. And sometimes they're kind of rough textured paper, like a vintage label, kind of scratched or tea stained. Sometimes there are optical effects, but those can distort. Sometimes there are, are intentional, like misprinting offsets. There's lots and lots of things you can do. I am really loving this Italian poster here. And that subtle, like light blue to through green to orange. Ah, it's beautiful. So to mimic that, that kind of background, I'm going to create a new layer instead of that black one on top of the gray. And I'm going to use a tool that we have not used quite in this way. We've used the paint bucket a lot in PhotoP. Now I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is what's on top of the paint bucket. And the gradient tool is just like using the gradient overlay as a layer style, except you're creating real pixels with it, not an effect. So if I use that tool, I'm going to close a lot of these. Close a lot of these. Trying to get PhotoP to be a little faster for me. Save my work. And there we go. So now I can use the gradient tool. I'll have the options at the top. I want it to be linear because I'm kind of mimicking that Italian one. And then I want to choose my type of gradient. And these are, these are from an older version of Photoshop, just like the ones in gradient overlay. And I want like a three-toned one, I think. So I'm going to use this one, this sunburst. And then I'll replace those colors. Now what's cool about the gradient tool is you choose by clicking and dragging the angle and the direction of it. So if I start up here outside of the image, click and drag down. This will be a diagonal gradient, you know, running behind my image. If I want it straight down, I just go straight down. Now, if I want to modify the gradient, I have to do that before I paint it, right? So how do I modify it? I click on the actual gradient bar and then I can change the actual colors. So I'm going to steal the colors from my image. I'm going to steal the blue. I'm going to steal a yellow. Oh, but it's, i got to give it time. Steal the blue, kind of a grayish blue. Get a little bit darker. There we go. Now I just need to wait. <laughs> Ah, this takes too long to choose. Just 
this does work. It's just being very, very slow for me. Or I can choose a different basic gradient. And you can actually uh, download gradients and add them to programs like Photoshop. Let's see, let's try this one. But what I love about this tool is I started with orange, right? Now I can use a lower opacity and I can layer it with this, this kind of bronze metal one. And at 43%, it's affecting it. If I want more, I can do more. And I'm creating my own kind of background. Let's choose another. Let's try the rainbow. And let's try it instead of normal mode. Let's try it on screen mode. So this will only let the lighter things through. Ooh. And then let's try warm to cool on overlay mode. And I can reverse it. I can also start at the bottom and end on the top. And each time this is layering it in a different way. And now let's try normal. And let's try this sky one. Now the reason I don't like this sky one is that it has a hard edge built into it in the middle, like a horizon line. And so if I do it like this, you're going to see that hard edge right in the middle of the, the image. once it affects it. It's taking a while. I just canceled it. So I'll do it at 100% just so you can see what I mean. Once it goes in. This is all happening on one layer. Oh, come on. But maybe I'm doing too much on one layer. So let me cancel that. Command Z. Let me make a new layer and show you. So I don't want that hard line in the middle. But I do want that blue gradation. So what I can do is actually use that same thing, but start here and end way down here. And it will just have the blues. Because I get to determine how long that, the space that gradation goes over. Then I can duplicate that. And I can play with layer styles. Hue saturation. This is just to get an interesting background. And I know because I, I built my lettering and my spot illustration on black, white, and gray that I can do things like gradations and textures and my image should be able to hold up to it. Whether I'm going lighter or darker. And then I can layer those up at different opacities. And maybe set it to dissolve, get some of that texture. It's subtle, but it's there. And now this is, ah, nope. It's <laughs> trying to zoom out. So you can see like the little flecks of different blues just from those two gradient layers with dissolve. Okay, now I'm going to take the opacity down and reveal that kind of orange that's behind it. And now it's starting to look pretty interesting. Where it starts to dissolve into these warms at the base. And this is what's called the diffusion pattern. We're going to learn about that when we talk about color separation, which is coming up soon. So I've got all this real subtlety to this high resolution image for my poster. And if I have it in my spot illustration, I want to have it in my type as well. Now, another way we can make our background, I'm going to save that. That's all on a gray 
I can also see what that looks like with white behind. If I want to brighten it. And I can take down the opacity of these different overlaying layers. Okay, the other thing I can do is I can com composite in backgrounds. So if I go to Pixabay, for instance, just so I can get some nice large quality, and I look for vintage paper, you'll see a lot of photographs and things, but then you'll also see these textures that are donated by designers for your use, Creative Commons Open to be modified and used for poster layout, wedding invitations, that kind of thing. Remember, they're just pixels. You can modify these any way you want. Some of them have a lot of color built into them, like this one. It's a little much, but they can be fun to play with. You download them. You can use them at full resolution. And they won't have any watermarks on them or they wouldn't have been allowed to be on the site and then you can drag them onto your image and you can layer those on so this is now behind a lot of my stuff i'm going to hold down shift and distort it it's on top of the orange and kind of replacing the orange I'm going to save at each step now because we're adding quite a bit of memory to these files. Maybe I want it on top. So that's what it would look like just on its own, right? Could be interesting. But then I can always play with opacity. I can play with blending modes. I can rasterize it. Try soft light. And that adds a nice kind of gradient dimension to it. Kind of like in that Italian travel poster. It's a little more subtle. So it can be a combination of things you make and things you composite. Sometimes I'll do things like graph paper. I did that with the morning class. Composite that in. Uh, let's bring in, what's the other one I downloaded? Yeah, it's just kind of basic old paper. Control T, not Command T. Rotate it. Enlarge it, holding down Option so it grows from the center. Go ahead and overlap your edges. We'll make a border next. And then decide how much you want that in opacity or with dissolve. That kind of old paper look. Now dissolve will give you this crazy moray pattern when you're zoomed out and it will look kind of really bad like this so always when you're finishing it off view it at full size so you can actually see what would print I think a little bit of this is helpful kind of brighten everything up Take the opacity up on some of these now that I've warmed it up. All right, so last thing. We've done the color background. We can keep doing more. If I view it, and I view it at pixel to pixel, that's 100%. I see my actual pixels matching my screen, and I see that that diffusion pattern is pretty interesting very subtle and will print well running behind all these different layers all these different gradients supporting the type 
Where the background is warm, my type is cooler. Where my background is cooler, my type is warmer. That kind of thing. 